Hello everyone, this is Thomas. My radio call is N1SPY, and today I will be doing a project about two things that I really love. The first is airplanes. They're, I just love everything about aviation, taking pictures of them, and etc. And the next thing is radio, and it just so happens that there's that that airplanes are completely loaded, like loaded with communications devices like radios. So I'm going to be doing a project focusing on what types of communications airplanes use and how they use them. So as I said, there's a lot of communication going on in airplanes and I've divided them into three sections, A, B, and C. A being VHF voice and VHF data, B being HF voice and HF data, and C being UHF data. And if you don't know what any of these means, don't worry, I will explain them and go by them one by one. I'm very excited to start, so without further ado, let's get started. The simplest form of radio communication in an airplane is VHF voice. The airplanes, the airplane's captains use this to communicate with um, close by control towers and it's usually around 118 to 136 megahertz and in AM. You can find what frequency it is for your local airport on its website or any other way that you can get info about it. And they usually just use it to communicate to their control tower about if they're flying in through transit, if they're going to land there, or if they're taking off from there, and if they're coming in from the east and west. All you need to do is look at a bunch of frequencies and just listen in, and you also have to get to understand the language. They use a few different words, and once you do that, you can have some happy listening. Left turn direct to Arc, climb and maintain 16000 Southwest 5430. Climbing Alpha Jet 601 is climbing through 2800 to level at 3000 and in the left turn heading 280. Climbing to 4000, Alpha Jet 601. One six sixteen thousand off Jet Six One. Zero eight zero, climb maintain five thousand, except Jet Six Nineteen. Another communication on VHF voice comes from the control tower, which is automated weather. Most airports have an automated weather system that will send a com computer automated voice to the airplane about what the current weather is and any obstacles that can possibly be of a threat to the to the airplane and anything important any important data that the airplane needs when it's landing. Advisory ground control and clearance library combined one two zero point zero two. Advise on initial contact you have information Yankee. All public account information, Yankee 2353 Zulu weather, wind 0607, visibility 10, sky clear, temperature 272.22, altimeter 3001. ILS, runway 9 or left approaching you, landing and departing runway 9 or left, 9 or right, and 1 2. Notice airman, crane located 1.7 miles west northwest, South Bunker Airport, 166 feet above ground level, runway 9 or left, by slope on monitor. Advisories, ground control and clearance delivery combined, 120.02. Advise on initial contact, you have information, Yankee. So I've talked about voice and here are a few words about data. If you look in between the two pilots in the cockpit, there's a sort of terminal and a keyboard. This terminal is an ACARS transmitter. What it does is it transmits data back and forth. And it's mostly automated, but it can, if the pilots want to send something specific, they can type it out on the keyboard and send it. Mostly, it sends information about flight plans and other things.
So next is HF voice. It's mostly used when aircraft are over oceans, like when they're flying from the US to somewhere in Europe. This is used on very specific fre frequencies with a schedule on which frequencies it can transmit on, and it usually sends information about flight plans, where they're going, etc. American 716, uh, cell call 5616. Okay, confirm your estimate for 40 West, please. Uh, say the estimate for 40 West. 40 West at 0006. 0006, confirm. Affirmative. Thank you, Danner. Okay, you're going to have to take a call sign. Barely, barely reading you. I'm very sorry. It's Lima X-ray Juliet 9R2. 9R2. Lima X-ray Juliet 9R2. Okay, confirm it's uh, Flexjet 9R2. That is affirmative. Okay, I have you very weak. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, just confirming you got our position on 41. We did, in fact, get your 40 West position, sir. Do you have our uh, HF frequencies at uh, 30 West? Uh, you'll get them via CPDLC. I am sorry, our CPDLC is not operable. Okay, at 30 West, it's going to be 4651 secondary 2872. Okay, we're just going to have 4651 secondary 2870 for uh, next step, matter two. Okay, Also, to assist aircraft flying over the oceans, some stations send automatic weather communications that can warn airplanes about erratic weather or anything else that may be of danger. Calgary. Calgary. Valid from the 17th at 2100 Zulu until the 18th at 1800 Zulu. Wind 220 degrees, 8 knots. Visibility more than 6 miles. Few clouds at 24,000. From 0400 Zulu. Wind 270 degrees, 6 knots. Visibility more than 6 miles. Clear. Becoming between 1400 Zulu and 1600 Zulu. 200 Zulu. Wind. 350 
One of the more important things that goes on in HF is HF data or selective calling also known as paging. Since most pilots don't sit and watch the radio all the time, when other stations need to get in contact with them, they'll send a selective call or cell call to the aircraft and the radio will recognize this and start blinking so that the pilots will know that they should pick up the radio. Another type of selective calling is HFDL. HFDL is similarly used to page aircraft, but mostly over the polar regions because the satellite coverage over there is not as efficient as it is on other places around the planet. So, the next thing that aircraft use is UHF data, and UHF data usually goes around on 300 to 1.3 gigahertz. And the only example that I have is ADSB. ADSB is a beacon equipped on every aircraft that transmits the aircraft's call sign, GPS, and altitude. If you try and track airplanes, and it shows you exactly where they are, it's probably getting this information through ADSB. 